Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tienery, and we are going to be taking a look at StoryDev2 and going on to the next tutorial, which is going to be taking a look at the story script, which is basically the name of the language that I have pretty much made up for this uh, particular project. We are back in the folder in that we created in our last tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the assets, then the convos, and then into this file right here. So I am going to open it up with Notepad++ and bring it over here. Now, this is obviously there's no syntax highlighting for this. I'm not going to do it now in this video, but um, basically what you see in front of you is how the script looks like so what we've got at the top is a conversation definition we use the keyword convo to start this uh, basically what's called command block in technical terms and what's wrapped in speech marks is the name of that conversation and if we go below we've got a colon and then a bunch of text right and it says welcome to your very first interactive story now if we go into here and open index.html into Google Chrome, this is what it says. Welcome to your very first interactive story. If we click on next, it doesn't do anything. There's probably a reason for that, because we haven't got anything else written there. Uh, so let's go back to this and spice things up a little bit. So. It's not really much of a conversation if there's no characters there. So what I'm going to do is create a character and I use the car keyword to define a character. Then what I need to do is wrap the name of the character inside of speech marks. I'm going to call this character David. And then I'm going to type in a, the hash keyword or pound sign if you're American and I am going to make this let's say a fairly dark green or darkish green but it's more of a hmm I guess we'll find out in a minute I guess we will find out in a minute so the way we start dialogue is we type in the name of the character on the left side of the colon and then on the right side of the colon we basically put in some text for that character to say so i am going to say hello world then what i'm going to do is i am going to go over to tutorials oops TV tutorial so this is the command prompt here and what I'm going to do is type in hxlib run sd2 build I was gonna build it now if we were to make an error in this we won't it won't actually show up in the command prompt because I haven't made the parser macro based meaning that it's not going to come up with any errors at compile time it will come up with errors at runtime so that's probably going to be the next thing on my list um, for improving story dev 2 but for now we don't have that so what I'm going to do is I am going to go back into the browser I'm going to refresh then I'm going to click next and then David says hello world that's quite a bright green actually how about we take a look at it um, and then of course we don't see anything else so let's go back into here now I'm going to create another character and get a conversation going so I'm going to say car I'm going to put my name Luke I am going to make this, let's say, uh, dark-ish orange, so 850, and 
I'm going to say stop using that stupid hello world nonsense. Because <laughs> why not? So I'm going to build that. So as you can see, we need to keep building it in order to get anything on the screen. That orange, that's very dark orange, you can barely see it. So I'm going to change that and make it a bit brighter. So let's say C7. Okay, that's a little better right so as you can tell there's a lot of building and a lot of um, testing things out inside the HTML5 target now we can make things a bit easier if we open this up in brackets so what I'm going to do so I'm going to search for brackets on my computer and with brackets what I can do is I can basically set up a workflow that allows us to enable live previewing for this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over to that folder and then show you it so two seconds uh, here we are here we are inside here so what I'm going to do is just close this down I'm going to expand this so we've got this index.html here we do have live.js so we didn't really need to refresh um, the browser but we've got it here anyway now I'm also going to close this as well and what I'm going to do is when I edit I'm going to be editing it in brackets and I am going to click on the lightning bolt and now we get a bit of live previewing so every time we change uh, this conversation and we build it it will take immediate effects now let me just add something else just to show that that does in fact work so I'm just gonna type in some random nonsense there build it go into Chrome and as you can see it automatically changed now that isn't much and obviously if we wanted to get to a specific passage we can't do that yet because I haven't implemented it but again we'll get there eventually as with all projects uh, so let's go back into our conversation and add some choices so I'm going to add some choices here now choice syntax we use the greater than sign and what I want to do is display uh, so let's see first of all I'm going to get rid of this because I don't want that anymore so the text to there let me try that again the text to display is going to be let's see let's go outside and then what I'm going to do is type in a dash or a hyphen and a greater than sign followed by the name of the conversation that I want to go to and this also needs to be wrapped in speech marks and I am going to call that conversation go outside if I type that right can't quite see it from here because the screen's huge uh, let's 
play games. Play games. So what I'm going to do is create two new conversations. Go outside. Um, in fact, I don't know what to say, to be honest, there. <laughs> and then play games. We can go to the park. And over here, I'm going to say we should play some video games. <coughs> So I'm just going to keep it like that for now, just for uh, demonstration purposes and show you what you can do. So, what I'm going to do is go back into here, hello world. Stop using that stupid hello world nonsense. You can probably make a better um, interactive story than me. <laughs> but I'm just giving you a general idea of how it works. So we click on next and we get these two um, options. What shall I pick? If I go, let's go outside, we can go to the park. And then of course there's nothing after that. Now you're probably wondering, that was kind of the same conversation. We didn't want the conversation to really clear, so what we can do is add a conversation option. I'm going to call it no clear. Basically, what that says is it tells the implementation side on the implement yeah on the implementation side of things that we do not want the current conversation to clear. We do not want this bit to clear because we want to basically give the illusion that we're still in the same conversation, and in this case, we technically would be. So. Let's build that and let's take a look at the results. Hello world. Let's play games. We should play some video games. So as you can see, the uh, conversation didn't clear. Okay. What we can also do is we could make these choices into its own conversation. So let's call it choices. And then at the end of this, I am going to say go to choices. Go to is another uh, keyword that basically says go to this conversation. I'm just going to paste this here. And I'm going to make that no clear as well to make sure it doesn't clear. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and build that. Now, the re now I'm going to show you why I'm doing this in a minute. So let's go outside so it still works as you would expect, right? Now the reason I'm going to do that is because I also want to add a thing called exclusive. Now what exclusive does is it basically says I want all of the choices in this current conversation to be exclusive meaning that if I go back to it at a later point in time those the choice that I clicked on will not will no longer appear so if I were to do go to choices this is terrible, by the way, you shouldn't do this in practice, but I just want to demonstrate what is going on, basically. So let's build that and go back into Chrome. Hello world. Oh, interesting. Looks like we've got a bit of a bug there. <laughs> Okay, I'll put it onto a different line. I might have to fix that at some point. Uh, so, 
let's uh, build that. Let it refresh automatically. I'm going to click on let's go outside. We can go to the park. And then of course we go back to that those choices again. We say let's play games, next. And then of course there's no options after that. And as you can see, we can't go anywhere, which is the reason why I was saying it's bad practice to do that. So that's basically the basics of interactive storytelling as far as this goes so far. Now what I can do is if I wanted to make things a bit more interesting is I could create another file and call it let's just say second.sdc doesn't really matter what it's called and what I'm going to do is cut these and place it in here and I'm going to get rid of those go to choices And what I'm also going to do is at the top of this file, I'm going to type in require. I'm going to say second. So the name of the file without the extension. And what this is going to do is it's basically saying, I require this file. Take a look at this resource, parse it, and then parse this and load, right? So, what's going to happen now is when I build it, build successful, we go back in here, let's go outside, we can go to the park, and as you can see, it still works, it works perfectly fine. That is the basics of this. Uh, scripting language so I am going to stop here because there's a lot more to cover and that is in particular we're going to be doing some advanced scripting using exclamation marks and adding some variables in and also using those variables within narration as well so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.